Sick. Ah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what I did this week, dude. Oh, well, since the last podcast, now both of us are unemployed. <laughs> yes, dude. I, I meant to bring that up, dude. You are you are now in the same boat as me. Officially in the same boat. And uh I gotta say, when you texted me, if it was any other situation. Like, if this is just regular life... Oh, yeah. Like, if this had happened not during a pandemic... I would have been like, yo, are you okay? Like, what yeah. the fuck are you going to do? Oh, my God. I but can't no, believe you now, lost your job. It's like, oh, no, you're just in the boat with everyone else now. Yeah, it's like, it's like it literally doesn't even phase me anymore. Like, I've been joking with John because John's like... John's working from home, and I was like, dude, just come to the studio session and do work from the studio. And he was like, I can't because, like, this. I was like, dude, you're going to get laid off, bro. You're <laughs> losing your job. You're losing your job. Just fucking face it. You were hired, like, a month ago. They're not keeping your ass around. Uh. <laughs> and I don't even feel like a dick saying it because it's probably fucking true, and everybody's in the same boat. It doesn't even seem weird anymore. Like, it, it's so normal now. I think we're up to, like, what? I think we surged like three million people, and I tried calling, yeah. dude. I tried calling unemployment office this week and do the online thing. <laughs> I did the online thing on like Tuesday. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but here's the thing. Though. It took me a minute to like refresh and get through all of it, but it eventually yeah, all it just takes, went through. It does take forever, but I tried doing that. But here's the issue: is that typically, okay? So the bill that was passed extends unemployment benefits to self-employed people which is not a regular circumstance normally yeah. if you're self-employed you do not qualify for those benefits yeah yeah so the maryland website because is not employment is paid by the employer so it gets like yes. shady when it's a self-employed thing yes um so when i go on the website when i went on the website what pisses me off is i go on the maryland unemployment website and one of the opening sections gives you the option to check off self-employed for something or other. I forgot what it was, but it, the option was there, self-employed. So I, I checked it, and then I proceeded through the rest of the application. And then, like, four sections later, you get to the employer section where they tell you to list your employers. And when I got to my employer section, I was like, okay, well, this is kind of what I was telling you guys before. I'm self-employed, so I can't list an employer because I don't have an employer. My employer is myself. I've worked for like 30 different places over the course of the month. None of them are my employers. They're just yeah. people that I contract with. So I tried at first, I just tried to type in self-employed to the line thinking like, okay, maybe that'll work. <laughs> and then it was like, and then it was like, this prompt isn't valid. You need to type in a valid registered business. Cause it like, like it, we're sending you, police over right now. Yeah, You're exactly. <laughs> so, so long story short of it is the website has not been updated with as those, of yeah, new yeah, changes with these credentials, yeah. so I can't apply online. I have Damn. to apply by calling up. So I on Friday morning, I fucking call up unemployment, and I get a fucking. So I call up, and I get a fucking busy signal, dude. Not not a hold thing. Not like we are experiencing a high volume of calls. Please hold. Not we're experiencing a high volume of calls. Please enter your number so we can call you back later. Just a busy signal. Like you're calling your grandmother's home phone and you just get a fucking busy signal. And I'm like, what the hell is this? So I try calling like six different numbers. I go through the website. I called the Cumberland branch. I called the fucking Salter. <laughs> I called the fucking Spanish line and thought hell maybe yeah. I could just talk to some fucking Spanish dude. <laughs> you just wing it. Yeah, and just be like, hola, yo soy unemployed. <laughs> What do uh, I fucking esta do? Musician. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo soy. <laughs> like, you know, just trying to get somebody. And then some of the lines you'd call would be like, I'm sorry, this line is no longer in service. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing, bro? Like, Damn. I I can sympathize to a point where you're gonna say that, okay, we're experiencing a high volume of calls, so like you know, obviously hold times are going to be longer than normal. What I can accept is the fact that your system wasn't even built for the capacity to talk to more than one fucking person at a time. Yeah. And your website isn't updated to the fucking minute knowing that you're going through a national catastrophe. Your, uh, your website is not updated to, to process people in my position that now qualify. Three days later, you still haven't done it. You still haven't fucking done it. And it's like, 
What am I supposed to feel about that, dude? I can't get in touch with anybody. I don't know where the fuck I stand. I don't know how to apply for the fucking benefits that I'm now entitled to. So what the fuck do I do? And the Maryland system is completely unprepared for it. And like I said, there's a certain amount of sympathy you can have for it, knowing that, yeah, nobody really expected this to happen. But at the same time, I do expect certain things to be taking place. Your call center should have the capacity to not just give me a busy signal or, or when you finally do get through to like a robot voice, they say, please try again later. Yeah, and then and you also, try again it later. It should just be up to the federal guidelines. Like, if they change, then it should change pretty much and immediately. This is, and this is why. And and I got into a, a kind of like a debate with this about Joe with, with Joe on our studio session because you know he's a political science major. We love talking about politics and stuff like that. We're pretty, you know, different on political views, but he he's you know he he's a good person to talk to. He's a smart kid, and um, but we were talking about that shit. And all I did, I just was raising the point that, like, this is what I've experienced, unfortunately, with any type of program that's been government run, whether it be the post office or the MVA or, in this case, unemployment. Any, any, any entity that is 100% monopolized by the government, they suck. They just fucking suck because there's no incentive to be good. Google Maryland Unemployment right now and their fucking rating, their star rating on Google – is 1.2, 1.2 stars. Let me just put it down there. It's good. 1.2 fucking stars on Google. What business would did still Dom be? Did Dom give you his leftovers? Yeah, he did. Very <laughs> nice yeah. of him. What a good he's brother, really, dude. He's really taking advantage of the fact that I'm homeless and poor now. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but, dude, he's the only one with a fucking job at that place. Is he exactly, he's still yeah, delivery yeah. driving? Right. Yeah, he's working at Seasons, but still collecting unemployment. Fucking piece of shit Damn. and uh well apparently you can you can as long as you're like less well, employed mean, than you used to be you can yeah, still collect if you're less employed and you're like putting in that income to your unemployment then it's okay yeah exactly but what going back to my point what business would be allowed to exist on a one-star rating where virtually everyone that deals with you and encounters you thinks you suck at your job that you still get to be in business and the only businesses that exist that way are businesses that have zero competition. You take a government agency and they just say, hey, we're the fucking post office, bro. What else are you going to do? You're going to fucking UPS, whatever. Hey, we're unemployment. You can't get any other type of unemployment. We have sole proprietorship of this fucking business and we can suck dick at it. And we cannot be able to do shit and you have no choice. And that's why we do suck. Because if they had competition, then they'd maybe would probably fucking update their website or maybe do anything to actually make it so that the people that are trying to apply would actually have a decent experience. But they can't. They don't because they don't have to because people have no choice but to go through Maryland unemployment. That's why I fucking hate that shit. And so now I fucking email them on Friday and I go, hey, I would like to hear, I know you're only working. This is what pissed me off too. Go to the fucking post office. They open at fucking, uh, they open at nine in the morning, which is exactly when everyone goes to work. So everybody has to be at work by 9. So you can't go before work. And then they take their lunch break from 12 to 1, which coincidentally just happens to be everyone else's lunch break too. So if you said, oh, I couldn't go to the post office before work, maybe I'll go during lunch. No, nope, because they close from 12 to 1. So by the time you have to go back to work, that's when they reopen. And then guess what? They close at fucking 4.30. So if you wanted to go after work, you couldn't go either. They don't do anything. They take no fucking measures whatsoever to make themselves convenient for the people who need them because they don't fucking have to. Is UPS closed from 12 to 1? Is FedEx closed from 12 to 1? No, because they actually have to appease people and actually be good at their fucking jobs. The post office doesn't give a fuck. The MVA is the only fucking person that deals with the, what they deal with. You have no other choice but to go to them, and that's why you fucking go there and wait in the line for fucking two hours for a fucking driver's license because you have no alternative. That's yeah. just, it, it's just, but also it's just, what happens when, like, so right now we're experienced basically, like, everything shut down except for necessary things like grocery stores, hospitals, et cetera. Like, pretty much, and, like, government subsidiaries. Um, so, like, how, is, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I understand where you're coming from with that, but also, like... At this point in time, it's like doesn't even matter. <laughs> like, there's well, no that, there's no room for capitalism right now for like competition and all this other shit. It's like we all just need to get through this bullshit. Well, this also, is, yeah. I didn't want to yeah. interrupt you earlier during mm -hmm. your speech, but this might have to be Patreon because I saw Dom try to go suck a a nipple. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Fucking wow, dude! Yeah, we'll make that bonus content then. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll just clip you trying that to fucking part. suck Jill's nipple. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude! Wow, fucking wow! <laughs> now, in regards in regards to what you just said, that's the same point that Joe brought up. And there is a certain element of that where the only point that I kind of responded to that was that if, you know, because, again, because I'm self-employed, I don't have the option of going through a government unemployment insurance. Damn, dude, you got a fucking OnlyFans video going on in the background. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to our OnlyFans for more of this content. <laughs> Let me get that jewel, dude. Come on. <laughs> I haven't been hitting it, though. All right, well, fucking hit it, dude. How many times do you need to fucking hit a jewel? I'll fucking leave it on the thing. Come back and get it next time you want it. All right, dude. Fuck you, dude. You're fucking <laughs> making our making our fucking podcast X rated, and then won't let me hit my own fucking jewel. <laughs> no, my own fucking jewel I took from Mehdi, dude. Unfucking my own jewel that I stole from my friend rightfully, <laughs> <laughs> who I owned up to last night on Zoom. <laughs> that I, I was going to tell him eventually. I was going to tell him eventually. <laughs> but uh, in terms of in terms of the whole thing we're talking about, if because I don't normally have the option of having unemployment benefits because I am self-employed, I was thinking about what if in a hypothetical world that, and this might be a thing, I haven't really looked into it, but maybe it is a thing, maybe, maybe I'm just fucking retard, but what if in a hypothetical world I could have applied for, or people could just apply to their own private insurance company, much like you have life insurance or home insurance or car insurance or health insurance for that you could have, insurance. yeah, unemployment insurance, so that Geico and Allstate and State Farm and Progressive and, 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 you know, all these different insurance companies could offer those policies so that when this, a catastrophe like this happens, you're not having a surge of three million people across the country only having one place to go to to apply for their insurance benefits. Instead, it would be like, yeah, I mean, OK, but the also people that all are all those all those like to begin with are just like they're all just fucking basically casinos taking people's money hoping that they never cash out yes yes that i mean that's that's all insurance is it's a gamble you're basically making a bet with the insurance company that you will you're gonna be it. healthy yeah yeah like i bet geico that i'll get in a car accident and geico bets me that i won't and then yeah. if i get in a car accident geico loses they have to pay me and if i don't get in a, in a car accident i lose, lose because i've been paying yeah, you 200 dollars a month for no reason you yeah, know yeah. so it's like that's so, you know I mean, that's and and I don't think private companies like that are in the business to pay out money. So I don't think unemployment insurance like that would ever be a thing outside well, they're, of a government assistance thing. They're not in the business and here's 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 what people I think sometimes miss is just as much as if Geico had to process let's just use the example of Geico cuz I like the fucking gecko. If dude, Geico my webcam's making my fucking guns look great. Dude, I was going to say, have you been working out, dude, or you just changed the fucking contrast on your webcam cuz either one, you fucking look good. <laughs> um but like Nah, dude, I'm I'm basically in a trade. Like I just lift shit up all day. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. But so Geico, if if they get overloaded with like it, any company would be surged with claims right now, obviously because we're going through something that's like pretty much a historical thing. What they would have to do is, is the same thing the government's doing is that Geico would be like, wow, we don't have all this money liquidated on hand to pay out all these people at once. We didn't estimate in our actuarial, actuarial, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pause, actuarial pause. No, analysis. No, no. Yes, pause. <laughs> we didn't estimate that all these claims would come in at once and we haven't prepared for that. But here's the thing. Neither did the government. When we talk yeah, about, but also the government, like, dude, the currency, the fucking dollar is doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like, there's exactly once it got off of like a gold standard. We're fucking there's you so, know. but the government is borrowing money from the Federal Reserve the same way that Geico would borrow money from the Federal. Reserve. If Geico or Progressive or Allstate all had to pay out all their clients at once, if everybody got in a fucking car accident, or, like a hurricane, for instance, my friend Sean I mean, but does that's just this like kind the, of shit. That's like the Great Depression shit, like where everyone was trying that's to take their is. money out and it wasn't there. 
Like, exactly. So they have to borrow from a separate entity. Dude, the government doesn't have $2.2 trillion right now. We're already fucking $2.2 trillion in debt. We don't have that money. We fucking made a bill. Way more than that in debt. <laughs> yeah, way more than that in debt. We fucking made a bill that just basically was essentially we took out another loan for $2 trillion from the Federal Reserve, and we have to pay that back. We have to pay that back. It wasn't real money. And Joe he brought up the same thing. He was like, well, you know, they can just print money and shit like that. But it's like, dude, the reason why – and here's, here's the basis of our economic system is we're not on the gold standard anymore, which means that our money is not based in anything of real value. The value of the American dollar is based in confidence of the American dollar. The value of the American dollar is based in the premise that everyone believes that of all the universal currencies that are available in the world – that the American dollar is the most stable and the thing that you have the best chance of investing in. Yeah, but that also only goes what, so we're, far. what we're figuring out right now is like, especially with like all the stock market shit, it's like the American economy is basically just the American worker. And once the American worker stops going to work, which what we're seeing now is, everyone else is just like, oh shit, well, that, like, how are we making money now? We don't have all these low-wage workers to do this work for us where we're just making speculations and investments and gambles and shorting and buying low, selling high, da-da-da-da. None of it even say, works unless yeah. people are working. Well, I think I think uh, uh, you could say that the, uh, the American economy and I think every economy, not just the American economy, but every economy is, is based off business. And, and when you shut down business, and it, when I say business, I don't mean – like the fucking bigwigs, like the billionaire companies. I mean, like just regular bars, like the Green Turtle or the Point and stuff like that, or Joey's company. Those businesses are the people that are 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 providing for people to have jobs. And so, when you take those businesses and you say you're not able to operate, but you still have to pay your fucking rent, you still have to pay your business expenses, you still have to pay taxes and shit like that, but you're not able to actually do your business to make any income, then all of a sudden you start seeing businesses have to lay people off. And then what happens once this whole shit is over is, you know, I don't know about your situation specifically, but there's going to be plenty of places. If you were a bartender or if you were a server or something like that, and after this whole shit blows over, you had a job beforehand, they, you got shut down for a bit, but you were thinking, okay, well, yeah, I'll just have my job again when it comes back. What if the place you were working at goes out of business? because of this then you don't have a job when you come back yeah you're I mean, fucked luckily i think i'm in like the few percent where like at least from the conversations i've had is like once everything's back and going again it's like all right you have a job again yeah you'll but be like, good yeah you'll be yeah. good but no because you have that relationship people, yeah. but for you but you're right like a lot of people aren't in that same situation like dude a lot of a lot of like small fucking boutique stores and small restaurants and small like people that were just you know paycheck to paycheck like most people are fucking paycheck to paycheck in this country and also like the meme that i've seen going around is like oh even the billion dollar companies are paycheck to paycheck apparently because yeah, they're all which... just fucking just shutting down firing everyone mm -hmm. all this other crazy shit yeah just because none of us like none of us planned for fucking a month of rainy days you know yeah like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah exactly crazy. And that's kind of like, it, it really is, and that's one of the things I was trying to say to Mahedi last night, because I do understand how people get annoyed when, when people pass bailout bills uh, that say like, oh, you know, we're, we're, we only gave X amount of dollars to the people and the rest went to these companies. But at the same time, there has to be a certain amount of appreciation for the fact that these companies that are being, and I don't, I don't even think it's fair to call it a bailout, because it's not, when you tell a business they're not allowed to operate, and then you say, hey, but because we're shutting your ass down, we're going to give you a check so you can still pay your rent and your taxes in the meantime? That's not a bailout. It's like if somebody fucking drove a car through my wall and then paid me for breaking my wall. That's not yeah. a fucking bailout. I mean, obviously a better thing would to be like a rent and mortgage freeze uh, rather yeah. than a bailout. Just because like, I don't know, like, and and I totally, I kind of see where Mahedi's coming from because like, I don't know. It's like the same thing as when, like, we bailed out Wall Street. It's like, dude, Wall Street doesn't really even fucking do anything. Like, all they're doing is just playing with the numbers from what everyone else is doing. They're not really... They don't need the bailouts. They don't need all this other crazy shit because, like, they're still all just gambling. So, like, if they just lose a big bet, then that should be on them. But what we're seeing now... 
luckily is like more Americans getting bailouts potentially, more small businesses getting bailouts potentially, and stimuluses and whatever else you want to call it. Yeah. But at the same time, we should be kind of wary of repeating a 2008 situation. Like, well, we the whole thing with the yeah, we should the whole th- like we shouldn't like validate bad business models or like unscrupulous scrupulous tactics. Like, yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't um, I don't know whatever it's called. Like allow uh, it, but the other yeah. word. Facil- facilitate it? Yeah, we shouldn't facilitate it. I agree. That's that's the word I was looking for. We're always on the okay, same cool. we're always on the same side, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Always on the same exactly. side. I, I think, yeah, I think definitely. I, I just it, it sometimes just annoys me that and I think I think we need to I think there just needs to be a certain amount of um distinction between when we say business, and I think this is something that a lot of people fall into. Because when people say, Oh, it was a business bailout and all this money went to businesses. I think a lot of the mistake people make is they always assume when they think of a corporation. When you say the word corporation, it's kind of like a buzzword. And when people hear the word corporation, they immediately it's like think... like a negative connotation, yeah, for sure. Some fucking guy in a tuxedo and a top hat, smoking a cigar at the top of a skyscraper, sitting on a pile of money. Like, that's every corporation. And they don't think that, like, oh, that's... We're t- when we're talking about businesses and corporations, we're talking about, like, melting pot. Seasons Pizza, fucking places that like those people are just the same level as we are. It just so happens that they own a business and they're paying us and they make maybe a little bit more. Some years they probably make less than some of their employees because they're the ones inheriting all the risk. Yeah. And well, so, I mean, returns on like restaurants are already terrible. Yeah. So I can't even imagine what it's like right now. Exactly. Like, technically, you know, like I have registered, like, I'm a business. Am I fucking rich? Am I fucking killing the game? If I'm, am I a fucking billionaire? Like, if somebody says, "Oh, we're bailing out businesses," You're a lot of that is boss, factored, dude. dude. A lot of that is factored into like, okay, when you say that now unemployment benefits are being extended to self-employed people, that is a business bailout because yeah. these people are not employers. Dude, you might be They're able not to get workers. a small business loan if you keep yourself employed. True, and all it'll I'm be tr- all negated. yeah, that's true. That's it'll be true. Negated because you wouldn't fire yourself. Exactly, yeah. But that's the the something problem is I don't know. I'm gonna I, I will look into that. I look gotta look into, into look something. Look into because, like the grants and shit too. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just have a a, diff, a slightly different perspective. Than I feel like a lot of people do, and yeah. I, I you have the same perspective. But like, it just does annoy me when when people talk. It just the one thing that the one thing that keeps bugging me that I keep seeing pop up in social media and stuff like that is people talking and saying like, oh, we're we're prioritizing. The stock market over human lives. We're prioritizing the economy over stu- over over human lives, and I'm like, all right. But see, the issue with the way you're thinking is, is that when you say the economy, your immediate thought is the big bankers, the speculators, the brokers, the Wall Street people. But you're not thinking in terms of the economy in general, which is, like I said before, if you had a job at Green Turtle, and then this happened, you don't have a job anymore. You don't have a job. And so when we're talking about stacking up the economy and the health risk of coronavirus, I don't think it's a zero-sum game where you have to just sit here and say, at all costs, no matter what, we prioritize human lives over the economy because the economy isn't just Wall Street. The economy isn't just billionaires. The economy is people like you and me who are out of work. And the question is, are we going to have a job when this comes back? How far is this going to go? And you have to kind of look at the gra- you have to look at the lines and say, okay, you know, at a certain point, I said this last week too, but I feel like it's important to be said every week. At what point do you say the negative effects of this virus have now they're now falling short of the negative effects of shutting down an entire country for months on end. I don't think it's a bad conversation to have, and I think people are vilified for having that conversation. People, when you say anything about, hey, can we talk about the economy? Can we talk about money flowing through this country and people having actual jobs? People look at you and go, oh, you're one of those people who only, you, you just care about big Wall Street. No, it's like, no, I don't care about fucking Wall Street. I'm talking about my job. I'm talking about your job, bro. I'm yeah. talking about 
people with regular businesses who they don't feel like they're included in this conversation because it just seems like the only thing people are talking about is the fucking virus. But we live in a real world, in a real economy, and these are real re repercussions and real ramifications we have to deal with if we just completely ignore that side of things. You know, so I, it, it just I feel like it's a it's a way of distracting from the conversation when people always try to look at business as this evil thing. At the end of the day, if you're an employee, it means that you work for somebody. It means that somebody employs you. If that person doesn't exist, you don't have a job. That fucking simple. That yeah. fucking simple. It's when true. people talk. I talked, I talked about, uh, well, I didn't talk about it, but I saw on Twitter last night, somebody was saying, like, uh, how, like, people shouldn't be obligated to pay rent or something like that. And, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm a renter. You're a renter. And we've both had thoughts, I'm sure, of, like, what am I going to do about rent? You know, how long can I last paying my rent yeah. if, if I'm not making any money? And should I have to? But these people, there are certain people who would look at, like, um, they would look at like landlords or something that are, they're down talking landlords and be like fucking landlords. They're all greedy. They're trying to fuck you over and stuff like that. And it's like, dude, like those are just people that own a property and they're renting it out to you that's in their exchange. Job. That's their job. And so it's like, you think you're entitled to live somewhere. You think you're entitled, like basically someone, I guess at the end of the day, the moral of the story is somebody has to eat it. If, if they put a rent freeze on, but they don't put a mortgage freeze on, that means that people who own homes are going to have to pay their mortgages without making any of the money that they were expecting to make to pay those mortgages. If they put a mortgage freeze on, that means that all the banks that were now making money off of mortgage payments are not going to be able to do the things that they were doing because they were expecting X amount of dollars in mortgage payments coming in every month. Somebody is going to have to eat it. And that's where the government has to step in and go, okay, we got to fucking mitigate this at a certain degree. But there's certain people who, like, they, they, they rent a house and they think, I heard somebody say, like, dude, if you showed up to work one day and your boss just said, hey, yeah, I need you to keep coming to work, but I can't pay you anymore, would you keep going to work? Yeah. And that's the same situation that's as people true. saying, yeah, that's the same situation as people saying, well, I, I rent this place, but I'm not going to pay my rent anymore. Well, then what the fuck obligation do I have if I own a fucking home and it's my home and you rent it and the agreement was, hey, you pay me X amount of dollars a month to rent my home. And then you say, hey, I'm not paying that rent. So you're going to pay for me to live here because you still have to pay your bills, but I'm not paying mine. And now I'm fucked and you're good. And it's like, yeah, I, I would say that I think a good landlord would reach out to his tenant and say, Hey, I understand everybody's going through a hard time right now. These are this is the amount that I have to cover per month. This is my mortgage payment. So that's all your rent is now. Yeah. Cause anything on top was profit that I was taking, rightfully so, because this is my job being a landlord and fucking fixing your pipes and all the extra bullshit I have to deal with yeah, to yeah. have a renter. But I'm cutting that out and I just want you to cover my expenses. That's what a good landlord would do. I, I think, think I think luckily I'm kind of already in that situation where like my rent isn't that high, luckily. Um, so, like, I mean, I'm able to stretch it a little bit further than, like, most people. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's it's definitely a weird situation because, like, I don't know. Like, let's say a landlord is collecting rent, but, like, they're fucking not paying their mortgage. Because it's like, oh, well, that's all frozen right now anyway. So, like, I don't mm -hmm. need to. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all weird. Hopefully like we'll have more answers throughout the week with like more news. And it can be like throughout the week. Hogan, <laughs> fucking whoever, dude. I saw Hogan said something about, uh, that we're going to start looking a lot more like New York in the next couple of weeks. And I don't know if he meant yeah. by we're going to have a big outbreak or. Yeah. I mean, he said by Easter, we're going to start looking like New York and, uh, what does that mean though? I mean, like, it's kind of, like, fair to say. Like, it's, I mean, we're, luckily, like, we're not, like, a huge, like, travel center. Like, I mean, obviously, what you're seeing now is, like, we're finally catching up, and it's, like, been in our country long enough where, like, we're finally getting to see kind of worst-case scenario with some of this shit. Like, because, like, we're running out of ventilators, we're running out of, like supplies running out of like masks and gowns and shit like 
hospitals are using like trash bags some places to like just like sanitize themselves from dealing with covid patients like it's fucking crazy um uh but i think what he was saying is like you know maryland we're we're kind of like luckily we're in a spot where like we're responding to it properly like in the right time of uh dealing with this and like dealing with the outbreak but also like new york got that shit first like san francisco got that shit first la got that shit first because those are the big international airports that's where people are going in and out of like we're kind of we're behind the curve still like we're still kind of going up on the fucking roller coaster we haven't got to the peak yet we, we're not going down yet like i mean, I don't know. Like it's kind yeah. of hard it's kind of hard to argue against what he was saying. Like Oh no, no totally I wasn't true. arguing. I was trying to figure out what he meant. I didn't know if he meant that he when he that said we're still going up the roller coaster and like we haven't seen the worst of it yet. Like it's going to get a lot worse. We're going to start seeing a lot more shit going down and we just need to know that that's happening. Like I don't know. I thought I thought he was saying that we're going to start looking a lot more like no- New York in terms of the lockdown situation because there's a lot of cities across the country that are far more locked down than we are. Like we're basically in a type of like a implicit lockdown where certain like businesses are shut down. Lo- lockdown. Yeah, exactly. Like like it's like we're not leaving our house because people are saying like you shouldn't, but there's nobody patrolling the streets making sure that you're not. Yeah. And there are certain cities across the country that are like that, I believe. I'm not sure, but I think, you know, like San Francisco, I know, is on a lockdown like that. Yeah. And so that's what I thought he meant as saying, like, hey, we're going to start being more like that in two weeks. That's I, that's what I was trying to gather. I didn't I know mean, if that's what he meant. I think, like, that kind of lockdown goes hand in hand with how serious the outbreak gets. Like, I, I don't think you can have one without the other. Like... Especially if in, like, a society that's actually trying to, like, maintain peace and order. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's going to be fucking, uh... I mean, it's not going to be any different for most people, really. I mean, like, you're already fucking locked in. I'm locked in. And like, I'm it's not going to fucking change shit. Yeah. I mean, for us. But, again, if this is varying degrees of people being affected. And I think there's people that are more receptive to this conversation... The more people that are affected by this, the more people are receptive to this conversation because there's still people who have their jobs. There's still people who are working. There's still people who are driving to work every day right yeah, now. Yeah, it's fucking even crazy. Though, even though that's you know that part of my life has been over for two weeks now and for you the past week, it's just varying degrees of like there's going to be a point when everybody's in the same boat and that's when we can really start having a conversation like we're having right now because right now there's certain people that just aren't experiencing the real effects of this. Yeah. At the moment, like, oh, you can't go out to a restaurant, but you still show up to work every day and you're still getting a paycheck. So you really don't really know. And and the thing, I think the overarching theme of this whole situation is, is that that money that we took out and that money that we borrowed, because we don't have it, the money that we borrowed from the Federal Reserve to pay out all these, you know, benefits and quote unquote bailouts over the course of this shutdown that's not money we have and that's money that at a certain point it's just like it's just like and and this is going back to the whole currency situation where people talk about like okay the value of the american dollar is valued as such because people believe in our economy and people believe that you're not going to invest in fucking this currency or that currency you're going to invest in the dollar because american business and american economy is always thriving relative to the rest of the world that's if you put that on a micro level and brought it to like an example of like you or me like, I have an $8,000 credit limit on my credit card. That's all predicated on the fact that I'm always able to pay my bills every month. Yeah, exactly. I'm, and I have a job, and I have a stream of income. I don't just perpetually have an $8,000 credit limit if I just continue to not be able to pay my credit card bill every month, and if I just continue to fucking max out shit and do nothing about it. At a certain point people start to lose, the the bank would start to lose confidence in me and say, hey, this guy isn't somebody that we should consider loaning more shit to because he's not able to pay his bills anymore. So that's kind of what the country's going through right now is our economy benefits immensely from the fact that we are the universal 
reserve currency, which means that if two countries are trading between each other, they usually go through American dollars because it's such a stable currency. If people lose faith in the American dollar because we are going this far into debt and because now if we like best case scenario, dude, when we come out of this, it's just like when you get in a car accident after like and, and your insurance rates go up because now you're a higher risk in the same way. Businesses, because they're the ones who are paying for unemployment, bi taxes on businesses are going to have to go up to pay for all of the all of the lost leader that we experienced through this thing. So now it's going to be harder to be in business in this country because they're going to have to raise taxes on not just businesses but every worker in America too. Yeah. We it, we took out an extra two trillion dollars in debt. That's not just imaginary money, even though people say it is. It's not imaginary. It's only imaginary until people stop imagining that it's worth it. And the second people lose confidence in the American economy and they say, yo, they just took out a $2 trillion spending bill and now they're trying to get their economy back on their feet and businesses are out of business and people aren't able to pay their bills and people are out of work and they're, they're not getting a tax income revenue. I don't think they're ever going to pay this money back. And maybe we're going to go to a different country as the Universal Reserve, like China or Russia or something like that. And that's how you see, just like out of World War II, where America came out on top and we became a world superpower, you might see a situation where America is not at the same level in the global economy that we were before this outbreak. Because our economy has been so weakened by this that all the benefits that we've experienced by being the number one on top country, we might lose. We might lose out on that now, you know, and that's uh, that's stuff that I'm scared of because it's it's a real threat. It's a real threat, and I don't, I just don't see enough people caring about it. Yeah, you know, I don't know. it really worries me. It's gonna be weird going back to like life after all this happens, just to be like, I wonder how much of it is different, how much of it is the same. Um, I don't know. It's gonna be a weird transition, definitely.